Hello to all my friends and family and welcome to Jim's 5am Club. I'm coming to you on this beautiful winter's day, on this wonderful Wednesday from Bondi Beach and as you can see it's a pooler. <laughs> Check out this weather. Uh, I've got the day off work so rather than uh, sit at home and lay on the couch I decided to uh, get up get up and get out and come down to uh, Bondi just for a bit of a walk and a look around just yesterday in the bay area here there were a couple of whales just frolicking out there where the surfers are how uh, how exciting would it have been to have been here yesterday anyway this is Sydney ladies and gentlemen this is Sydney winter there are people swimming, there are people surfing, and there are people making the most of this beautiful, most beautiful beach. This iconic beach, which is renowned worldwide. I've got to tell you, it's one of my favorite beaches here in Australia, without a doubt. And um, I always love coming down here because it, there's always something happening. There are people always here and um, a lot more in the past of course with uh, the tourists but now without the tourists it is a little bit quieter but it still has its magic what i want to do today is uh, take you through a book summary i'll go on a walk and talk the book summary that i want to go through today is entitled hyper focus by an author named chris bailey chris bailey went, wrote this interesting book on hyper focus and what we'll do is we'll uh, learn a few, a few tricks on how to not only focus, but to be hyper focused, to get a little bit more out of our lives and to uh, get the focus we need in order to achieve the dreams that we have for us. The author kicks off the book with a, uh, a quote it's a bit of a tricky quote for me to read, but I'll, I'll do my best. Because um, what the author here says is, um, we need to keep one important complex object of attention in our awareness as you work. So uh, it's one of those quotes which is a little bit um, tricky to say, but let me just try and articulate as best I can what he means by this quote is basically saying that we really need to focus on one thing at a time but that focus needs to be really really intense uh, where we can remove all the distractions so that uh, we are uh, basically um, focused as i said on the one thing uh, in order to be able to um, give it the best shot and the author goes on to say that with the advent of the internet, our attention spans have actually plummeted. Um, and, I, and I understand this, and I agree with it to a certain extent, that these days we've just got so many, so many distractions in our lives that it's hard to focus on anything because we're being bombarded. We're being bombarded by television. We're being and we're being bombarded left, right, and center. So it's really, really hard to maintain a focus on anything. Uh, but especially the generations that are growing up with the internet, uh, with social media, because they're constantly in a, um, a I guess in a, a mode of distraction. And uh, we can't really focus for as long as we need in order to uh, to become as productive as we can. So the author kicks off the book. Can't, the author kicks off the book here with um, a, a call to action that uh, in order to achieve hyper-focus, uh, which will help us reap many rewards, there are four elements that we need to, uh, to incorporate 
into our skill set. So the elements are as follows. We need to master the four stages of hyper-focus, according to the author. And the first one, and that, they're all pretty obvious, so it's not rocket science in any way, shape or form. But the author here says that the first thing you need to do is you need to pick or select what you're going to focus on. And then once you've selected and picked what you want to focus on, the next point that the author talks about is that you need to eliminate all the options, all the distractions, all the other things that can uh, distract you from maintaining the focus on that one particular item. And, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we progress through this uh, book summary. And the uh, third thing is that once you've picked something and once you've eliminated all the options and all the distractions, then you need to force yourself to focus intently on the thing that you want to uh, achieve, the thing that you want to do, which takes a lot of effort. And the third thing, or sorry, the fourth thing, the last thing in terms of the elements that this author talks about is that we need to once again redirect our mind back to what we need to focus on because we will have mind wander happening uh, throughout the process. So it's just normal. It's just normal to, uh, to have mind wander and to uh, be distracted, but we need to refocus uh, as quickly as we can back onto that element, that item that we were focusing on in the first place. And uh, I live in awe sometimes because a number of years ago, we had the, uh, the Greek presidential guard come to Australia the mighty Evzones, Evzons, come to Australia and just to watch them stand at, uh, at attention whilst they were guarding the, um, the cenotaph there at Martin Place. For one hour, they hardly moved. They hardly blinked. They hardly showed any, any form of distraction. And I think I mentioned on a previous 5am club that uh, I went to church one day and I said, look, I'll stand up for an hour and not, not fidget, not move, not do anything. And I just couldn't do it. And I said to myself, how do these Evzones, how do these young, strong men, how can they continue to maintain a strong focus, even though there are a number of distractions? Uh, there are people moving about, there are people talking, there are pretty girls um, walking about that could uh, distract any red-blooded male, to be honest. Um, and also in Greece, they do it in all weather conditions. They do it in the heat of summer. They do it in the bitter, bitter cold of winter. They do it when it's raining, when it's hailing, when it's snowing. And they also do it during riots, when people are shouting, carrying on, throwing objects, when there's smoke uh, filling the area as well. So it just goes to show that it is possible to generate and maintain a, uh, an intense focus. And it's something, I guess, that gets learned because the Evzones in Greece are hand-picked soldiers from the ones who are doing military service. And as we said, they undergo a number of hours of vigorous training, which uh, prepares them for the task at hand. And I imagine that uh, the training that they do uh, must um, have some elements there, some tricks, some secrets that uh, we don't get to find out about. But uh, they are just masters absolute masters in the hyper focus. Uh, I guess there was also an example that I had because I was a martial artist having achieved my uh, black belt, my two dan black belt in Gojiru. But uh, one year I remember 
that uh, a group of us went up to the uh, Blue Mountains and it was springtime, it was still pretty cold and uh, we went to a place called Waterfall in the Blue Mountains and we basically did waterfall training which is uh, standing under a waterfall a cold cold waterfall and doing uh, breathing exercising breathing carters and I remember how difficult and how challenging it was because what you realize is that when, once you got cold or different distractions impacting you while you're trying to focus and do something it is really really difficult and challenging but uh, once again I was able to do it uh, but I did learn a lot about myself I learned a little bit more about hyper focus and uh, focus and discipline is one of those key elements that I was able to uh, gain with my martial arts training. So moving on now, as you can see, I'm down here at Bondi Icebergs. The water temperature is probably about 17 degrees, but you've got your people there swimming laps back and forward, uh, which is something that I enjoy doing. It requires discipline, but once you acclimatize, once you get used to it, you can become very, very good at it as well. So the second point to come out of this book from this author is that we need to regularly check in with ourselves to become more intentional about what's in your attention space. So as we said before, we can learn the tricks of uh, becoming more focused, but we re regularly need to check in according to the author. Um, it's something that doesn't come naturally to, uh, to people. So you need to uh, be intentional about what's in your attention space and you need to develop a discipline. So the author then goes on to say that um, our mind, and this is a beauty, this is an absolute beauty. So I remember doing this a number of years ago, but now I've got the statistics to back it up. The author here says that our brain, our mind, takes in about 11 million piece, pieces of information every second. So basically everything, every single thing that's going on around me at this particular moment in time is coming through each and every one of my senses and is being processed by my brain at the rate of potentially 11 million pieces of information every single second. But we can only process about 40 things at once. And our short-term memory can only, uh, is only good for about seven things at the one time. So what this is telling us is that uh, we have a lot of things happening at the one time. And if you were to focus and try and process all of those 11 million things currently happening concurrently at the one time, you'd absolutely go crazy. So in order to protect us, in order to enable us to, uh, to function as humans, what we have is in our brains, we've got a thing called a reticular activating system, which is a filter which enables us to filter out the vast majority of uh, those 11 million sensory activities that are being uh, received every si single second of our lives and to just allow the things that are important, that are interesting, that are of danger to get through to enable us to process them and to uh, function as efficiently and as effectively as possible. So uh, the author talks about a concept called meta-awareness, which is something that we can use to keep us on track. So to be aware of the things that are critical for our survival, that are critical for our um, functioning, 
and that are some things that we can use to our growth and benefit, I guess, is one way of describing it. So um, the author then goes on to talk about the fact that it will probably become easier for us to focus if we remove as many distractions from our work environment or from, from our environment before we even begin our task at hand. Because like it or not, we are all getting distracted and derailed all the time. So in order to, uh, to master hyperfocus, one of the key elements and the main calls to action is to do something to eliminate as many of those distractions from your environment that you can. And by eliminating those distractions, you're in a better, a much better position to be able to function and to experience and to exploit the strengths of hyper focus. So how do we get rid of the distractions? You need to, once again, intentionally um, identify and look at your work environment, your home environment, um, all of those things that we do, and you need to intentionally get rid of all the distractions and block them out uh, where possible. So once again, we don't let things just happen in our lives. What we do is we intentionally manage our lives, our processes, our environments, in order to get the maximum outcomes. So what, what do we do? We look at our environment and we basically journal wherever possible how we spend most of our time, what are the things that we normally do, and who we spend most of our time interfacing and interacting with. And uh, what we do is uh, then we, uh, we look at our physical and our digital, envi digital environments. Because uh, our physical environments have a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of distraction. Um, in our home environments. So the more of those distractions that we can eliminate, the better off it is. But we also are surrounded by distractions from a digital perspective. Um, our mobile phones, our iPads, our computers, um, our email, um, our phones, where people are messaging us, SMS, um, or calling us, all of these things. So what the author is suggesting is one thing that we may want to consider doing is simply um, switching off all of our digital devices and then just checking in to our digital network every now and then to set yourself some time to check in rather than to allow your digital device to interrupt you and to distract you at will. So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me on this magic, magic winter's day. I'm down here at Bondi Beach, the iconic Bondi Beach. I'm at the Icebergs Olympic Ocean Pool. And as you can see, it's uh, full of activity. There are people swimming their laps. And uh, I just wish I'd brought my swimming costume down today so I could be part of it as well. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable. And uh, let's make the most of uh, what this day has to offer. And hopefully we can get some and take some uh, valuable messages from this book entitled Hyperfocus by Chris Bailey and learn how to focus, learn how to select the important things that we want to focus on, um, learn how to eliminate where possible all the distractions that we have, flooding our environment, both the digital ones and the physical ones, learn how to focus and then to redirect our minds whenever they go, whenever it goes wandering, 
and to live our, a life with intention rather than just going with the flow. So uh, I guess that's it. So thank you very much. Let's uh, try and get through this day, get through this week. Let's be the wind beneath our wings and hopefully we can live, learn and pass it on and uh, get out of the house wherever possible and make the most of our lives. Yasas, take care and uh, I look forward to coming to you again from a different location with a different message, a message of empowerment where we can make, make it um, a day to remember. I guess it's one way of saying it. Yasas, take care and bye for now. Ha, ha, ha.